could have a, like a little conversation. And we got the thumbs up. And we are once again live and back from uh, HQ and Barry for a live Tuesday session. And today is, of course, Wastewater Wisdom Live. And once again, I'm joined by my colleague, the technical product specialist on all things wastewater treatment, David. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Cam. Yep, yeah, very well, thank you. How was your weekend? Oh, it seemed like a lifetime ago. It was only two days ago. Goodness me. Uh, yeah, it was very pleasant. Thank you. Um, yep, watched football. Wasn't particularly entertaining. What game did you watch? Oh, well, the uh, FA Cup final. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was quite exciting, entertaining football. Yeah, but, it, was, um, it was an entertaining nil-nil draw. As much as entertaining as nil-nil can be. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that game was. But yeah, Wednesday night, or not Wednesday, last night was a game that I absolutely adored. Oh my goodness me! What happened last night? Newcastle beat Arsenal two 0 Oh, did puts... they? I, I I did see that they uh, Arsenal were chip slips for the weekend. Yeah. I didn't realise that they had. Uh... Which puts the mighty Spurs <laughs> two points ahead of Arsenal in the last game against Norwich. We, it would be typical Spurs to go to Norwich and lose, but we only need a point, just one point to get top four. Which I just, oh, I'll be head over heels. I'm on cloud nine as it is, but I can already know by the end of this weekend my whole mood could be ruined for the whole summer if uh, we don't pull this Yeah, off. we know what you like when we're watching the Indian game. Well, it was actually the World Cup, wasn't it? Then, um, of course, we watched the game here. And, uh, oh, against and, Croatia. Uh, against, I know, the one prior to that one um, where we actually won penalties and you're running around the office like a lunatic. Oh, yeah, it was. That was the Columbia <laughs> game. That was Columbia game. But the one against Croatia, I remember, and people still have a dig at me today because everyone stayed and I just stormed off. I was like, I'm not having this. I'm going to bed. Well, we did have the Scots here, didn't we? So. Yeah, that didn't help. But anyway, we'll stop nattering and get into the um, main topic of today's Wastewater Wisdom Live. And today, myself and David are going to, going to be discussing what is the better option, a septic tank or a sewage treatment pump. Two very similar systems, but one offer slightly or offers much better quality effluent results. But there are certain... Um, Certain times where one option might be better than the other. So myself and David are going to discuss what those kind of criteria are and what is the better option, a septic tank or a sewage treatment plant. So David, kick it off. What would you need to consider and what do you think is the better option? OK, um, I think when we're talking about advanced and disadvantage, it's probably going to be easier for the audience to understand um, if we review the same points on each tank. And, of course, then we can discuss the advantages between one and each. So the first thing I think, which you've already touched on, um, which is probably the most important, is the treatment level. Um, now, we first need to appreciate that um, treatment plants are kind of the evolution um, of wastewater treatments. Um, so initially, of course, we would refer to um, septic tanks being um, still a workable solution, but they're quite limited in terms of where they can be installed. And then we've got the treatment plant, which is actually when we're talking about um, treating the foul water to a much better quality of discharge so we can then um, discharge out so it's less harmful to the environment. Um, so the main advantage is that initially we'll start off course with, with treatment plants. They offer a much better quality of effluent. They will protect the environment. Um, more so going forward because we're not discharging such harmful chemicals. Um, when we talk about treatment plants, we're actually not only um, breaking down um, the um, suspended solid and, and BOD slightly, as you would do um, in a septic tank. There's two main parameters you look at in the septic tank is a BOD and suspended solids. With the treatment plants, we also treat those same parameters put to a much higher level, but we also look at um, the ammonia um, and the um, potentially some nutrients as well, um, like uh, phosphorus uh, reduction and also um, nitrogen removal. So treatment plants are the next stage in the evolution of the future for the treatment of foul water, certainly when you can't connect into a mains network. So Treatment plants, big thumbs up when we want to um, talk about really treatment efficiency. Um, I suppose the next thing we wanted to kind of touch on is servicing, I would say. Um, with um, a septic tank, um, we generally have um, no moving components um, in the underground tank. We just have um, the, the tank um, basically separated in various chambers and we just allow sediments um, through the tank um, before it then discharges out. As there are no moving parts or mechanical items within the tank, of course, we don't need to get an engineer down to change uh, various components within the tank. So that's kind of a positive to the septic tank. If we then refer that to a treatment plant, of course, now depending, of course, on the type of treatment plant, there are many different types in the environment, um, in, in the environment, <laughs> on the market. Um, if we just generally refer to our own, um, we generally have um, 
airlift technology within our tank. So rigid pipe work, which, which doesn't move per se, but we do have um, diffusers, uh, membrane diffusers within the tank, which do um, degrade. Those membrane liners do degrade over, say, 10, 15 years. So you would need to look to replace those after a period of time. And those membrane liners are basically what's introducing the fine bubbles in the tank to bring in the, um, the dissolved oxygen, which is what we need to promote the biological process within the treatment plant. So with a wastewater treatment plant, there is additional surfacing that needs to be looked after, um, which is something to consider. On a domestic um, household, this is usually once a year. For commercial systems, this could be anything be potentially up to two to three times a year, depending on how many people it's serving. So something to bear in mind. Um, with, um, of course, this kind of uh, relates quite nicely to um, potentially costs of running the system. Um, so with a septic tank, of course, uh, we've just got gravity flow through of water throughout the system. Um, so there's no additional running costs to a septic tank. Um, with the treatment plants, there is going to be very minimal costs. Um, when we talk about, of course, weighing up by the number of um, treatment people, the number of people it's going to be supporting, um, there is going to be a minimal cost for electricity for running the um, components or um, various other uh, mechanical items in other competitor systems. Um, so if we talk about, um, say, a pot five population plant, for example, it generally works um, off about a 50 to 60 um, watt compressor. So it's very minimal. With a mass systems, it's an intermittent treatment process throughout the day, as you would know. Um, and yeah, it generally runs for about 12 hours a day at 60 watts. So 60 watts is, is very minimal. If you compare it to like a light bulb, it's going to be less than most light bulbs. And yeah, so it's generally for 12 hours a day. So it's if we look at current bills at this moment in time, it always used to be around about 16 pence per kilowatt hour, but that's probably increasing with current times. Um, what are they very amazed to? I'm not too sure, but we're consider we look, really looking at this moment in time anything to run a treatment plant for anything from 40 to 50 pounds a year. So it's very, very small. Um, kind of want to um, talk about, um, what do we want to talk about next? Um, I suppose um, if we talk about costs, we could look, talk about costs a bit more. If you're looking at um, a septic tank, um, certainly the supply of the initial system, uh, the septic tank is pretty much just putting a tank into mm -hmm. the ground and connecting in for an outflow. So in relation to the septic tank alone, the installation and cost could be cheaper. Um, if we then talk about the discharge options, this is where a treatment plant could become more favourable. So a treatment plant is um, typically going to be probably twice as expensive as a septic tank, depending on the manufacturer. Um, but with the septic tank, of course, we have, uh, sorry, um, we have to discharge to a drainage field. And drainage fields are quite a, a downside to um, a septic tank. Um, certainly when you talk about drainage field, drainage field is basically an area where we um, distribute um, the, tr um, the treated waste into the ground. Um, you need to have quite a lot of area, area available to destroy, install a drainage field. You also need to be able to have um, uh, the soil, which is going to be able to percolate it. If you don't have that, of course, you're a bit stuck on the septic tank front. Where this is more advantageous to um, a treatment plant, we, of course, we have the option, because we're treating the foul water to a much better quality, we can discharge into um, um, a water course. And on running costs, especially, uh, you'll probably come on to that, with septic tanks and treatment plants, when it comes to disludging and emptying, that is a maintenance and servicing cost over time that could add up. And with a septic tank, you're going to be um, emptying it a lot more often than a treatment plant because mm -hmm. the um, sludge and solids are actually a further reduced in a treatment plant, per se. Uh, yes, this is uh, a very important point. As we're treating um, the incoming organic waste um, from within a treatment plant, we would see the frequency of the sludge in levels um, drop down. Um, it could be as much as 50%. Um, but again, this is kind of dependent on also usage. So as a blanket thing, I think support. If we just say 50% is going to be empty less fr uh, frequently, but you could potentially, of course, within the design pro proposal, have a much bigger tank than you need. Um, when we talk about sizings of tanks with with septics, you generally just base it on the flow of water that's going through the system. With the treatment plants, um, we look at also the concentrations of BOD and ammonia, and you would size it accordingly to all three of those parameters. So it might be that the septic tank is slightly larger. Sorry, the treatment plants. Is slightly larger than a septic um, but in relation to um, desludging if you think desludging can cost anything from 250 to 300 pounds for a small treatment plant um, a one-off um, desludging if you're having to get your system um, empty potentially once or 
twice per year as you would do the septic tank. Six hundred pounds versus three hundred pounds mm. is quite a considerable running cost for the customer. And when you consider, um, like you said, there <clears throat> it could reduce fifty percent level of the sludge. You're then having to double the amount of desludging periods for or how many times you're having to desludge a septic tank. Mm -hmm. so therefore, compounded over time, that cost of three hundred pound is double. Or your desludging cost for a septic tank is double what it would be a treatment plant. Yes, it would be. And of course, we then compare that back to what I said in terms of the running costs for a treatment plant, which is going to be a similar sort of level. We talk about the five pop again. That if we're doing two empties per year within an equivalent septic tank uh, versus the treatment plants, that additional three hundred pounds mm -hmm. is going to be much more than the running costs on the treatment plant of yeah. um, forty to fifty pounds. So, on the whole, the running costs of the treatment plants, if you look at the long term, is going to be. Um, Certainly on those two remarks, it's yeah. going to be much better. We do, of course, recommend um, with a treatment plant, just because we are trying to protect the environment as much as we can do, um, because we're discharging potentially directly to our water course. Um, in that particular scenario, you should get your treatment plant serviced to ensure that it is conforming as well as um, you would like it to. The servicings can be come in very diff different types of levels, and you've got different service providers in and around the country, which each charge different prices, but... Again, even if you were to factor that in, that would still be less than what you would mm. um, equate to versus an overall running cost of a septic tank. So treatment plants on the whole, although they're a bit more, they need to be a bit more clever, understand how the treatment process works, it's actually probably a bit more cost effective to have a treatment plant installed than it would be um, a septic tank. Because like you say, the running costs are going to be a lot less on a treatment plant, even though the initial investment to have a treatment plant installed over a septic tank could be a lot greater is the fact that the life cycle of that product and making sure that is serviced properly and the running costs of its lifetime, the septic tank potentially is a lot more expensive than treatment plant. Yeah, and I think it's also something to consider as well, which is something we discussed within um, the CPD. It's like the direction, the future of wastewater treatment is more in favour, of course, and mm. wastewater treatment plants. Um, and with that, um, it's all to do with protecting the environment as much as we can. Um, I mean, we're the younger generation, um, so we've got. To clean up the mess. We, we've we've got. To, it's not that the, the, there are some old systems out there. This is again a, a very uh, common conversation that I have with various customers: is that there are so many septic tanks out in the market which don't conform to the current mm. regulations, which is a really scary number. And the amount of um, obstacles now um, we need to basically conform to in terms of the new technology, new systems goes in is huge and. Most manufacturers would argue we need to sort out what's currently in place more than really pull back on what um, we are doing currently now with yeah. wastewater treatment systems. I mean, we're still developing. I mean, we're very much looking at the reduction of nutrients for phosphorus and nitrogen hugely now because that's what we've been asked to do with, by the local environment authorities. But again, reverting back to what septic tanks are current and the damage that they could potentially be causing if they're not maintained properly, it's a huge swing in the favour of the treatment plant that's. That's what mm -hmm. really people should be looking at to install, certainly in the future. I mean, it, with the re recent changes to um, the general Biden rules, we've had um, two updates in the last five years where people weren't um, allowed to basically um, install um, um, septic tanks going to watercourses anymore, it had to go to a drainage field. And now pretty much we're now looking to upgrade all waste, existing waste, uh, septic tanks in the ground to waste or treatment plants if we know they're connected into a watercourse. So it's a huge shift in terms of um, everyone doing the best they can to protect the environment. And so it's a big thumbs up for, for treatment plants on, on that front. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's huge how, um, how much people will start to write treatment plants over septic tanks, I, I think in the next couple of years, certainly. What other points would you say that people, or do you think we should talk about when it comes to weighing up a septic tank or a treatment plant? Um... Uh, well, we just kind of really covered just future um, prospects and what we expect to see in the future. But um, I suppose we could talk about discharge options in a little bit more detail. Um, with septic tanks, we have the option to discharge to a drainage field only now. Certainly, if someone has got a septic tank discharge into um, a water course, they should be very much be looking to upgrade it um, as quickly as they can um, to a treatment plant, or they would, of course, change from discharging to that water course into a drainage field if, the, if the, they've got the percolation rates to do so. Um, yeah, outside of that, yeah, just go with the treatment plant to a water course or potentially another form of discharge option where it could be a drainage mound or yeah. something within the code of practice. If it falls outside of the code of practice, they'll need to get a permit of discharge. Um, if they, people want more details on what code of practice, it's 62974, the discharge of our water. So 
just a, a small comment there. The fact that you know that off the top of your head is a oh, bit you, you, you go into a few meetings um, on the British water scene, you pick up these things quite quickly. As if all the things to memorise that you could possibly memorise, you memorise them. Uh, memorise the code of practice. With, that is some commitment. Uh, trust me. If you go into a meeting with all these other manufacturers, and of course they've been in the industry, potentially doing, attending these meetings certainly more longer than I have, even though I've been working for Graf for, for 11 years. It's like when they refer to 6207, like, oh my God, what's 6207? <laughs> so like, you go away, you do your homework, and the next time you, you come in, you can actually start implementing and, and putting your... So it's, yeah. it's kind of like a joining in with the club a bit, I suppose. So you kind of got to know um, what um, they're talking about. So of course... That's one can... cool club to be a part of. <laughs> it certainly is. Yes. <laughs> they have the best conversations. <laughs> Um, it, 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 there are some interesting points of discussion. You, you'll be surprised. So, in your opinion, then, what do you think is better? Oh, well, Sept septic tank or treatment plant? Oh, 100 percent, uh, treatment plant. Um, even though there are certain understandings that people need to appreciate with a treatment plant, in terms of, of course, looking for the future, protecting the environment, the, the general shift of foul water treatment whether it be on a domestic level or commercial level we're always pushing water to go into a much better quality of treatments i mean all if you're not talking about treatment plants of course we are sending all of our foul water into um, municipal treatment plants where it's getting treated to levels which now treatment plants can conform to mm. so that's how much the technology has developed and i just think that certainly um if people are considering storing a, a septic tank they've got to have a, have a very good reason to do so because it's possible that regulations will change in the next few years that you'll have to upgrade it to a treatment plant. So it's just something that people should be aware of. So just to recap, pretty much the three things are the, the performance is much more efficient. The cost of a treatment plant is much more efficient yep. over a long period of time. Yes. And they're much safer for the environment yep. and ecosystems. Yes. So there you have it. <laughs> a riveting debate, as always, when it comes to wastewater treatment. But now you know what we believe is best, a treatment plant is much more superior, in our opinion, than a septic tank for those three reasons and many, many more. But now it's time to look at <coughs> the project recap of the week. And this one we have, have up or coming up on the screen is a 16 pop advanced system that was quite local to us, only up the road. Uh, yes, it's um, Live Rails. So it's um, another one we um, service and maintain as part of us, uh, our service uh, so provider training. Um, so if people don't know, um, we do um, invite um, companies here, um, engineers here to um, have training with us to get a better understanding of how systems force the treatment process within the treatment plants, what they need to look for in terms of maintenance and servicing. And this is one of the sites that we go to because um, it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, being a 16 pop advanced system, it's a two tank system, um, SBR technology, so sequence battery up technology. So we pretty much have a primary uh, catchment tank where all of our waste comes in. We then lift that waste across into um, a treatment reactor and we treat that waste before then discharging out. Um, this one's going to um, a water course. Um, I think it's quite nice, this project. It's, uh, again, another project where we've looked at where it's gone in. It's installed in quite a large um, house. I think it's an eight-bedroom house. Um, but they've also got an annex which has been currently built off the side of it. So, of course, there's another system from Graph where we've kind of future-proofed it. So system size has been um, slightly oversized initially. Of course, we generally like to have 25% um, requirements of organic material coming into our treatment plants to ensure a very good treatment performance. And then, of course, once this annex is completed, they can couple into yep. it. And of course, the system will support the whole site. So it's, again, something where we've been very much involved from the start. We've went out and did a site investigation. We proposed a system which would um, help work initially. And of course, they had the scope um, to develop a site first and connect into it and still got a fully working system without having to influence a new treatment plant. So again, start to finish, we've been involved in installation and commissioning and servicing. Um, so yeah, it's a, a really um, nice project for us to talk about. And the pictures on screen that we have um, kind of just points out what David was saying in terms of the service provider training is that it's a really nice local system to have that we can then take engineers to and really show how our systems work. So from a training point of view, perfect system. It, yeah, it's fantastic. So it's not only, of course, they get to see our treatment plant in operation, they get to see and work the control panel itself. Um, and run through the different system cycles. We um, also go through what um, we expect to um, really carry out and understand in terms of the maintenance of the system to ensure that it's, the system is working in, um, as it can be. So the photos, um, which you can see on the screen, uh, you can see a group of guys um, gathered around one of our um, engineers, Jamie, who's running through um, the maintenance process. So 
you'll, you'll notice from the photos that he's got um, a very large um, clear tube, which is a slug pipette, which detects um, or shows the level of water. So it's a bisection of the tank in terms of how much sludge, which is sitting at the bottom of that tube. Of course, you then have um, a water level above it, which is the minimum water level in the tank. And from that, you can gauge, of course, how full the tank is. Um, we also have um, some photos um, of a 1,000 um, millimeter measuring cylinder, um, which basically um, uh, gives us um, an idea, of course, um, of, of the um, how good quality the sludge is. Basically, what we want to see is we want to see good separation between um, the water and the sludge. We want it to flock together. Um, that's a good way to determine how good that sludge is within the tank and how well the treatment parts is performing. We have, um, we don't know all of our systems, we have um, a sampling pot so we can, they can take a level of, uh, they can take a sample of the effluent. They, they can then drop um, the um, dissolved oxygen meter in that to check what the dissolved oxygen level is within the treatment plant. It's one of the key things we look at with a treatment plant, of course, is introducing oxygen into the water. By enhancing the oxygen level, of course, that's how we get the biological process as best as we can do. So checking how well and how high that level of oxygen is within the tank is a really key, um, nice key thing for us to look at. Um, and then, of course, we also do um, an ammonia test, um, which is um, um, which is basically just a strip test on-site test, where they can basically gauge a level of how good or low the, um, the ammonia concentration is in the effluent to really get a good idea of how well the um, treatment plant is performing. With ammonia, it's one of the more difficult mm -hmm. tests to get low. So if we are doing an on-site test, if you want to tell the customer how well our treatment plant is performing, if we know that the ammonia is low, it kind of shows that, um, that everything else in the treatment plant is working as we would like it to as well. So you can, of course, take some samples away with you and send them off to a bottle chemical lab to get really accurate figures. But um, the on-site tests are, are generally um, certainly sufficient for, um, um, yeah, an on-site, um, yeah, just to show how well to the environmental body, if they're questioning it, how well the treatment plant is performing. So it really is um, good that we could give these engineers and these companies an understanding of kind of how well treatment plants need to conform to in terms of and how they work and <laughs> all those sort of things. It's not only our systems, of course, it's yeah. all the other types of um, system out of the market as well so it's a really important day from and they hope they usually get quite a lot from it mm. so and like you say it's very important not only for us but for the actual end user to, so they have qualified engineers going out to service these systems to ensure that the systems aren't doing any damage to local environment or ecosystem because as we mentioned before that's where it's going to it's really focusing on making sure that treatment plants are not causing any damage or to like i say the local environment and ecosystem by having these guys service and trained as kind of rigorous, rigorous as, as they say, to make sure that our systems are conformant to the um, standards that we set. Yeah, 100%. Perfect. So now is time for answering any questions that have come in during the live stream. And we've got a few that have come up already. So does a sewage treatment plant need a soak away? Okay. Um, with um, any sorts of foul water off mains um, solution, you do need to have some form of... Um, discharge from that tank unless it's accessible mm -hmm. um, of course um, with a septic tank that would traditionally go to what they would call a soakaway or a drainage field uh, with a treatment plant again it would go to those um, same options um, but you also have the scope to go into a water course now of course within um, um, the the general um, practice and um, there are certain levels of foul water that's fall within the permit of application if the treatment plant in this case is exceeding those flows um so if we're discharging to um to um to a water course and it's over uh, five um, me um meters cubed um of course they have to get a permit of application for that um so it's something that's um of course we look at pretty much um in all project sizes certainly we talk about larger flows um Discharge does need to be considered. Uh, with treatment plants, we have this option to go into, of course, drainage field, um, or of course, the advantage with the treatment, field, uh, treatment plant over a septic tank is, of course, we have uh, the option to go to a water course as well. Perfect. So, just to recap, it's not the kind of um, give all or end all option like it is with a septic tank. You can only go to a drainage field, but with a treatment plant, you can go to both a, a soakway. But if you have the water course nearby, it can be discharged into that. Correct. Perfect. And the next question we have up on screen is how long will a septic tank usually last? Okay. Um, septic tanks are, as I say, they're kind of like old te technology. Um, you'll see septic tanks built from 
many, many, many years ago. Um, I think that's all dependent, of course, on what SEPT tank is made from. Um, so it could be that's from some older uh, generation buildings. Um, they've got brick tanks. And of course, well, those brick tanks will start to degrade over time. If you were to pop them out, you would just probably see that the um, surface walls of that tank were starting to um, wear over time. So they could last decades. Um, but certainly more recently, we're now looking at, of course, um, plastic tanks. You may still get some concrete tanks. Um, uh, lifetimes on these tanks could range depending on the quality of plastic. It could be reinforced plastic, it could be HDP, which is what we use. Um, it could be anything from um, 15 to 25 years, and then service life um, could go beyond that. But mostly you'll see manufacturers say, oh, our tank will do about 25 years. Um, there's no reason why it can't go beyond that, um, certainly if it's installed as per the manufacturer's installation instructions. Um, of course, talking about manufacturers' installation instructions, they should try and adhere to that as much as they can. Of course, there are some limiting factors, certainly in the UK in terms of ground conditions, where you might need to um, ask the manufacturer's advice if you've got very uh, challenging um, circumstances you need to overcome. Um, but yeah, warranties, try and bear that in mind as well when we're talking about installation. But yeah, certainly surface life, anything from about up to 25 years on a plastic tank. Concrete, brick tanks, but the whole kettle of fish. There's actually, before we move on to the next question, this is actually a side note. Weirdly enough, this has reminded me of a dream I had the other night. Right. So I went back somehow to my grandparents' house, their old house in France, and they had to have their septic tank replaced to a treatment plant. Right. So in my dream, I went back to the house, they had a graph system installed. And I was just there, like, I was taking photos, I'm like, oh my God, they've got a graph system so installed, obviously, because we have us. Um, Subsidiary. <laughs> Subsidiary in France. So I was just there, like, completely amazing. It just reminded me of this dream. But I remember quite vividly is that when it was discharged you could see the soakway actually it was also not working correctly because you could see when the water was discharging the soakway the water would come off into the ground level so you can actually see it seeping through the ground obviously that means the drainage field is not working correctly because it's just overflowing i was like i just remember this weird dream but yeah i guess it's got to the point now you must have many treatments. i'm afraid callum this is not something i've had i have a problem uh, with yet. I, <laughs> I, I actually live based for a treatment i don't need to dream it <laughs> i don't dream about it <laughs> yeah and i had yeah, I just have really weird dreams, and that was one of them. And the other one was Harry Kane arguing with Erlen Haaland as who's going to be the top scorer next season. And that was my other dream that I had the exact same. That's, that's a bit more on topic for you. Yeah, that's more, that makes sense for me, but the other <laughs> one just doesn't. Right, and then the next question we have coming up is, can a septic tank be installed uphill from a house? Okay. Um, with, um, of course, any drainage pipe work. We generally want to favour, of course, gravity discharge where we can and not incorporate um, a solution where we're going to have to be going uphill. Because mm -hmm. um, as soon as you go uphill, we need to, of course, have some sort of device in place um, to, um, to, of course, push the water uphill. So most commonly, of course, that's going to be um, a pump station or a pump chamber. Um, in which case, of course, whether the, ch the <coughs> tank is installed prior to the pump chamber or mm -hmm. potentially afterwards, um, it's an additional cost. It's going to um, be um, something that customer needs to look after. Because, um, of course, at some stage, it, th there's going to be a working mechanical pump in that pump chamber. Usually, you would have two, and you'd have um, some sort of um, overflow or alarm box system to say, oh, one of these pumps has yeah. failed, get it replaced. But again, it's a working mechanical item um, within the solution. Um, it does need to be looked after because, of course, as soon as that solution fails, we're going to see a backup of the foul water. So it's something that we can, um, certainly most manufacturers will offer pumping pump station of some form. This can be, as I say, before or after the treatment part, but it is something that very much needs to be serviced and maintained and looked after um, as part of the servicing uh, contract. So do bear that in mind if you do need to send the foul water uphill from your development. Perfect. And then the next question we have is... Can a septic tank or even treatment plant in this case be filled with rainwater? Oh, okay. Um, this is something which um, certainly you would see again on older systems um, where we're not really talking about a biological process within the tank. So I suppose if we are talking about septic tanks, this is again a bit of a grey area. Um, but I kind of want to refer back to, of course, where we see the direction of foul water treatment going in the future. Um, although you probably will come across um, rainwater being discharged into septic tanks. I think it's generally 
with the future of upgrading to um, treatment plants. Um, if you do need to upgrade an existing tank, which is receiving uh, both foul and rainwater, you need to re-divert that, um, that rainwater away from what would potentially be a treatment yeah. plant because we can't have rainwater within our biological system because it sets the biological process. So with the direction of foul water treatments, I'm very much shifting towards um, treatment plants over septic tanks. I would strong, um, I would advise people to try and keep rainwater away from their foul water discharge as much as possible, even when they're talking about <clears throat> a septic tank, because it's more than likely they'll need to change that septic tank in the future for a treatment plant. And of course, yeah. that will be a huge obstacle um, for them um, to overcome a later on down the line. So try and keep rainwater away from septic tanks and foul water treatment plants where you can. All that, and even with septic tanks as they are now, if they do connect with their rainwater and they're seeing a massive surge or a big um, you know, rainfall shower in a short space of time, that could cause the septic tank to flood. Uh, yeah. It, it, again, this is it's difficult to advise on this because, of course, tanks should be sized in accordance of expected um, not only foul water flows, but, of course, storm, storm events. Um, and, of course, there's always the opportunity where you are going to have potentially a lot more people attend yeah. your house um, and have a barbecue or something. So you've got more, more foul water. You could also potentially have um, a designed storm flow event, although it's unlikely, outside of um, the, the event that you have the tank designed a line of. And in, that, in, that, in that particular case, you could have your foul water being potentially lifted out of your tank, which is really not what we want. No. Um, so, that would ruin the barbecue. Uh, it, 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 certainly, it certainly would. Um, so, yeah, of course, being in England... We always get rain in this country. If you've got, you can have a barbecue. Ninety percent of the time, it's gonna, it's gonna right. rain. Um, so <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully not. I'm not wishing badly on anyone's uh, weekend weekend plans, but um, yeah, rain is very, very good practice. I think to keep rainwater and storm water um, away from your foul water discharge requirements. Perfect. That's that. And then I think we have another question that's come in. Can a treatment plant cause odor to come back into the house? Okay. Um, the treatment plant itself can't really cause an odour. This is going to be a very uh, uh, interesting discussion point, depending on what I say here. Okay, um, treatment plants, of course, um, are a biological process within the tank. If we've got a very good biological process um, that is been running for a period of time, we would think that's a relatively static, but the, but the biological process is mm -hmm. happy within the tank. Sudden changes to that environment, whether it be... Um, potentially more um, additional flows coming in um, suddenly or the uh, homeowners um, basically change and and somebody inherits the system and of course they start using a different um, or more potential cleaning products. The environment in the tank is going to change and the bacteria need to adjust to that um, new, um, that new uh, environment. And when they're changing, they will be smells generated from the treatment plant. Um, so in that particular case, it's always good to implement ventilation where you can. You should also have water traps and all the um, uh, discharge pipes from your sinks and your showers and stuff in your house. So if you were to get flow throughs back into the property, it's going to remain within the pipework and not come back up into the bathrooms or kitchens, wherever it might be. So good practice to have ventilation in place, install traps on all the discharge water outlets from the house. Um, and yeah, just try and keep um, the, the foul water that you're discharging into your um, treatment plants consistent so you can use cleaning products by all means um there's no, uh, we do have um some um some information within our maintenance documents saying oh you can't put x y z into your treatment plant but as long as you keep what you're doing with your treatment plant consistent the, the biological process will be happy and you shouldn't get any smells generated um certainly from um a single um uh, batch reaction tank um when you've got um basically movement of the foul water potentially with um, air lifts or pumps whilst that is generating you're turning the water over you may get some smells produced which is why the ventilation is important um, but yeah so you can channel that that foul air away from the property away from where humans are going to um, congregate and come together so it's something to be mindful of and, and certainly if you're um, involved within designing and installing the wastewater treatment system you want to put solutions in place that at that first of things it's good to have an appreciation of um where things need to go and of course implement the necessary things to prevent if it does happen yeah. we know we've got a solution in place to to so it's not going to disturb the, the, the homeowner living in the property perfect I believe that answers that one and i think it's oh we have another question come in 
doing an awesome job, guys. Well, thank you, Alan. We always do an <laughs> awesome job. That's a, not so much of a question, more of a, a true statement. 100% fact coming through there. But I believe we've had the thumbs up, and I believe that's all the questions that have come in during today's session. So I want to say a big thank you for coming again to watch us talk about all things wastewater treatment in today's Wastewater Wisdom session. And thank you to David for taking the time to sit down with us. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. As always, and like they said, we're doing an amazing job. We always do. So <clears throat> make sure you uh, come back for next week for our next uh, live Tuesday session, which I believe is Storm Water School. So make sure you come back uh, for that. But other than that, thank you once again for joining us. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you soon.